Okay, so the goal here today is how to do a firmware update on the Zoom F4 field recorder. First thing we need to do is let's go to the website, which is zoom-na.com. Once we're there, we go to the support and downloads area. We find the product that's that we want to do an update. In our case, it's the F4. So it takes us down to that section. Oh, look, it tells us that there is a, a 2.0 upda update available. Well, that's great for us because that's exactly what we're looking for. And here's what we're looking for is the, the latest firmware updates. So we'll take that, click on it. Let's do a save as. I've already prepared a specific folder for this to be saved into. And if we take a look there, hey, just by coincidence, F4 firmware updates. Let's put that in there and save it. Once it is saved, this is definitely not where we want it to go, right? So I'm going to take this. Let's scrap that. And is it from our update videos? No, we want this to go into our... Hmm, where do I want to put this? How about the one that says firmware? That would be kind of novel. The reason I want this to be by itself is I want to expand this. I want to extract these files. Let's go back to the firmware folder and let's paste them here. I'm looking for this file in particular. I want to move this file to the card that's going to go into the Zoom recorder. Now, if you take a look here, these are the, the subfolders or subdirectories, if you will, that the F4 uses. And if you format the card in there, it will recreate these for you. We want to simply copy that car, that bin file to the unit. After that, we want to make sure that this card, after it's removed, goes into SD slot number one into the Zoom recorder for the rest of the procedure. Okay, so now we're at the back of the Zoom F4. Let's get a little bit closer. What we're going to do is we're going to look for the SD card, which is number one or number two. Number one's here, number two is here. Let's put the card into slot number one. It's now in there. Let's close that up. The next step is to press the power after pressing and holding the play pause button. So I'm going to press and hold the play pause button. Then I'm going to turn on the power button. Let's take a look and do that now. Pressing and holding. Very good. Now, what's telling us here is that the battery is not charged enough to do a firmware upgrade. And that's a safety issue. You don't want your batteries to fail in the middle of a firmware upgrade, which would pretty much trash your unit. So now, let's plug the unit in and take it from there. Unlike the F8, I believe the F4 does not have a dedicated input port for the AC power adapter. Instead, it uses the Hirose connector plugged into the AC adapter, and that is plugged in to the unit in a very specific way. Now, I have not taken a chance to see how, how I'm going to twist this right now, but you pull the connector back a little bit and you find the quick, correct way that it inserts and you just snap it on. 
the unit is now charged with being connected to the AC connector and should permit us to do the firmware update. Okay, we're going to try it again like last time. We're going to press and hold the play pause button and the power button. So I'm going to press the play pause, hit the power button. I'll let it go really quick, so I'm not sure if it really did it in time. But it did not, because I didn't hold it. Okay, let me just turn that off. Let's turn it off one more time and do it properly. Okay, press and hold the play pause button. It now sees that there is an update. So I'm going to set the connector, choose yes, and press and it is now updated. Or rather, it is now updating. On the bottom right, you can clearly see the version 2.0. So this unit is now updated. Very cool. One of my favorite reasons for getting the uh, version 2.0 firmware update is the way that the meters are displayed. Right now my minus 12 dB, which is where I normally record, is in the center. I'd like to use more of the display to show me a little bit more accurately from a distance. So by going into the menu, system, oh sorry, menu, system, the level meter, the reference level, and go from normal level to no, low level, I'm going back again, you see that my minus 12 is now moved over a little bit further to the right, and that permits me to use a little bit more of the screen when I'm doing recordings, and it lets me see a little bit accurately, a little bit more accurately from a distance where I am. I'm using a little bit more of the screen as opposed to using that middle of the screen which would be now the minus 24 previously the minus 12 I now can go almost three quarters of the way across and see my minus 12 level reference level it's just a matter of convenience whatever you like to use go right ahead this is how I feel I like to use it the best from my use